Good morning. Uh, good morning. How is everybody doing? Um, Dali's asked me, are you live? Um, yes, I am live, sweetheart. Um, just running a bit behind here. I just actually got in. I had a, an appointment that no fault of my own. They were running half an hour late. So I just actually got back in and uh, quickly set up the camera. Uh, can't see you, says my sister. So let me just quickly share this. Um, give me one second. Okay, um, give me a couple more here. Um, so out of sorts when you're running <laughs> a little bit behind. Oh, had a few more people jump on. Good morning, good morning. And I'll be right there. Can you see my arm? Uh, good part. Uh, say my own name. We are live. Talking to myself this morning. Talking to myself. Sure. Good morning, men. Good night, Vimy. Good morning, Kirsty. We spent all of Sunday together, literally. Fun, fun workshop. Um, workshop is still available if anybody wants to do it, um, because it is now um, available privately. Okay, I'm coming now. We are live. Okay. So, yes, I had an appointment this morning. And good morning, Charlie. It's raining. It's windy here, but sunny. I think it's sunny. It was sunny when I was out this morning. Um, yeah, I had an appointment this morning. And the appointment themselves was running half an hour late. So I was rushing to get home and trying to get sorted. Uh, but I'm here now. I'm here now. Uh, thanks for Sunday. Oh, thank you, Kirsty. You guys are welcome in your work. It's beautiful. Thank you for posting. I appreciate that. Good news was I knew I found you. I got lost, left Della. I don't think you got lost, Dali. I think I was a little bit lost because I just um got in. Um tomorrow I have an appointment in the morning too. I'm getting my COVID shot. Mm, I don't know how I feel about it. Long off two minds. I was telling my little sister today. Uh, oh, that's good, Vimy. I'm glad it's nice there. Oh, some rain though. Um, I don't know. I'm of two minds if I want to get it or not. Um, but I have to think about my mum and dad too. Good morning, Gloria. Um, anyway, so, um, what are we doing today? Okay, so today I actually, uh, well, the other day. I actually was showing Dali um, this piece that I had worked on. And I was saying, oh, I just love this monochromic effect. It's so easy to achieve. And she goes, oh, you have to do a Facebook Live on it. Um, so this is really today, really, you got your shot all went well. Good, Charlie. I hope um, there was no sore arm because I've got workshops to get ready. Um, this is very kind of dark in here, you can see. So I'm just going to show you how to achieve this look with the molds uh, from Stampiri. They full molds and very 3D, as you can see. And I was looking at her, I was thinking, wow, you know, um, she's great. I can definitely do a Facebook on that. Dali just loves her to bits. And then I was thinking, I was putting her on different backgrounds and I really liked her on this background because it has postcard on it and it's like she's traveling and it's got the Taj Mahal behind her. So I thought, you know what, I'll revisit the transparent wax. Um, uh, the Sunday workshop was to do with the brown wax uh, involved quite a bit. So today I thought, uh, especially those who joined the workshop that were new but now are on the group and watching, I wanted to have something for them too to see the different waxes involved. And I just thought she went really well, her colours and everything. So I'm going to re revisit creating using the transparent wax. And then we will play around um, with 
the mold. I showed you last week a sneak peek of one of the projects. Uh, I'll just grab it. It's not completed, so I, it's not completed, so I can only show you a corner of it. Um, but I've got the light bulb right there. So this was done in the exact same technique. Okay, so very 3D. Oh, thank you, Dali. And talking about workshops, uh, I know I said I would have <laughs> these ones ready. They're not quite ready. They're about 90% ready. I'm going to be picking Dali's brain after this class. But I'll show you a sneak peek of that other project. And I never usually show sneak peeks while my work is in progress. Once in a while, I'll post a picture. But I, I was sending Dali pictures of this while I was at my appointment uh, waiting and I says, I can't get over the Timeless stencil because I haven't had a chance to use the stencil from the Timeless collection yet. So I wanted to do a project with Timeless. And um, so this has got the rice papers, but this has also got the stencil. And I really just want to show you guys because I'm so, I don't know what to say. I'm in love. So that's just uh, the rice paper that I'm using. It's got a little draw here. Um, but look at this stencil. This is the timeless stencil. Isn't that absolutely stunning? I'll show you the back. My drawer is going to come out. I just, uh, hi, our angel. I just love, love, love this stencil. This box is actually 12 inches tall, so you can see it. So without giving away too much what more I'm doing with it, I just had to share this stencil. Um, I just love it. And this technique that I did, new technique to me, I was practicing and playing. So this workshop will be coming soon. I just got to finish it kind of off. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. It's, uh, I really enjoyed it. There's also a little detail in there. But uh, thanks, men. Uh, I hope you guys, I, I'm really happy about this workshop. Um, I, I'm, as Dali knows, I like, I'm quite clean with my work sometimes. Albeit this one with the denim collection is very clean also. Um, it's got some kind of stuff going on, but very clean. But this is about 80% done. So enough about that. Uh, I tried to grab my cup of tea before I came. Um, thank you, Lynette. Thank you, Gloria. Yes, that stencil um, is... I um, I... To be honest with you, I saw this stencil and I've had it. And of course I wanted to do something with Timeless. I've had it and I hadn't used it. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's going to look perfect on this box. So let's go ahead and let's start on this. I'm just going to grab some parchment paper. I'm just going to use my parchment paper that I was using for my box. Um, as I mentioned, I was a little bit out of sorts because <laughs> I was a little bit late. Okay, let's move this over. So let's just prep our uh, mold first. This is the mold in its original form using amazing resin. It's called amazing resin. I don't just say it's, uh, oh, thank you, our angel. It's not just, um, oh, thank you, our angel. It's not just um, amazing resin. It is called amazing resin. I can show you the bottle. Uh, it's called amazing casting resin. It's very difficult to get a hold of. Um, but Michael's here in Canada carries it. I know Dali has got some. Um, it's done by Illuminate and this is the one is that's is ivory they do a crystal clear one too this one's ivory and it sets in five minutes and I if you're wondering how to use it I have a YouTube on how to create your molds and the mold that I've used and I've actually um, going to be making small the mold i used is uh, k3 pta 487 is from the lady um, vagabond collection so that's what it looks like i do have some suitcases um 
but I haven't done the wax on them yet. And I've actually cut down my suitcases and made them smaller. So yeah, great, great, great uh, molds. I actually have a bunch of uh, molds made. I can probably show you guys. <laughs> Um, these are from some of the other um, Stamperia molds. Sorry, I'm reaching over because I wasn't planning on doing this. Um, this is one an owl. This is from this mold that I'm just using. Here's a spaceship. Here's the light bulbs from the other mold that I'm using in the industrial denim. So they're just so beautiful. And you can see that detail on there. It's so, so nice. Are you are we are we Jill? <laughs> I know. Oh I see Jill what you're saying. So this is from this same mold. But I just love them and they're absolutely flat in the back and it takes five minutes for them to completely dry. Nice thing is that you can heat them up and you can um bend them. So they're great for that. So we're going to be using the primer paste gesso. Um, I have a new one. Um, finally went through my other one. So well, that's what it looks like. You guys know what primer gesso looks like. I'm going to take a mangy old brush here. And we're just going to come straight on to the mold. So I'm just going to do the size. I'm just going to do this and set her on the side so that she can dry. Oh, um, our angel, you have to try the resin. I mean, um, it literally dries before your eyes. Um, when I did it, I've done it for a Facebook Live. You can go back and watch it. You will be like, oh, I need this in my life. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies. There's so many different waxes out there. I bet... I could probably, although she won't fit on the background I have in place, I could probably use different colored waxes. This is why I love the Pentart primers because they're so thick and all you need is one coat. You can paint the back too if you want to. I'm not going to um, do it for this because if you're going to glue it down, you don't need to. But obviously, if you're going to have a prop top or off the board then or you're in your project, then do the back. So I'm not too fussed. I'm just primering her, just making sure there's so much detail that I want to make sure that I get into um everything you know just for fun maybe i will grab my other waxes when we get there maybe i'll make her colorful i think i just like the monochromic effect um but we'll see we'll see how i feel I'm still trying to catch up we're running into the house trying to do my facebook live <laughs> i could have probably postponed it it's a good job I take pictures the day before of what I'm doing, so at least I can post them if I'm not home. Oh, yeah, so this one, our angel, it goes in clear. You have about a 30-second working, a three-minute working time, so it's a very quick resin you have to work with. Very simple. Um, I just use medicine measuring cups, so you can do it on a scale. And it's a uh, one-to-one -one ratio of hardener and resin. And then um, it, it when it dries, it, it dries ivory. So there you have it. She looks pretty good. I'm going to just hold her at a few different angles because 
this is where you catch all the areas where you might not have done it so well. Okay, she looks pretty good to me. So that's it for um, primering her. Let's just set her aside to dry. It's interesting how she's going to go from that to that. I just find it really interesting to see all the little areas in there. She's highlighted really well. It's because I did her. Okay, so next step, let's just go back and do a little bit of re... Uh, eh, what are we going to do here? Let's just go back and do a little bit of revisiting with the wax here. Uh, not the wax. Yes, the wax. Just grabbing myself a sheet of parchment paper. These are my go-to things. I don't want to get this dirty today. I don't know why. Okay, so we I'm gonna be working with the actual set from the rest effect kit and the patina effect kit. So we have the earth brown, reddish brown, red clay, okra, and then I'm pulling the green from the country green from the patina effect kit. And then I've got white. And look, I went finally went through all my white. I have a new white. I get excited when I open new bottles. Okay. So let's see how this turns out. Because this was quite a long time ago that I did this. So it will be interesting to say the least. Uh, let me find a brush. I treated myself to some new Stamperia brushes that we carry. Uh, Deli says, just use the Stamperia brushes. Take them off your shelf and use them. Um, so I, I took three. Three different sizes. I do have others that I use from Stamperia. Uh, but I don't need to use those brushes. I could use any brush. But I want to use my new brushes. Okay. Hello, Kavita. This is why I got this one. What did you get, Dali? I know, it's like Christmas come early. So this is a brown. I really need to take this lid off. And I think I was telling people last time on um, Sunday, uh, I'll have to do this with a knife. Dali's like, no, don't get the knife. Uh, pop out this wooden piece, uh, cardboard. I pop it out, cardboard piece, because I find that it, it takes the moisture out of your paints. Okay, so let's start with this, shall we? So I'm doing nothing. I'm not primering it or nothing. I'm just going to come in. Um, you can use this technique on card making, whatever your heart desires. And this is the earth brown. Sometimes I find new brushes are no fun because they're not quite broken in yet. And this is too soft for me, this brush. I might have to pull another one out. See, you get used to working with what you have. And then all of a sudden new is like, uh, that doesn't work for me. Let's do the size because we want it to look nice. This is how I do my sides so that it doesn't go on the back. So if I was to go this way, I'd be taking paint that's going to drip onto the back. But if I go the opposite way like this, then that's how you keep your surface clear. But most of you who've taken a workshop know that. The people say to me, how oh, sometimes your work is so tidy in the back? Because I actually take my time and <laughs> paint this way rather than up and down with a smaller brush, or at least I try to most of the time. It depends. But you'll see, it probably won't be by the time I'm done because Facebook Live is not the time to be super tidy, is it? So look at my back, pretty oopsie daisy, not there, pretty tidy. I'm 
Yeah, I don't know. I might trade my brush. It's too new right now. Do you guys have that when your brush is just too new yet? You haven't broken it in? Is there such a thing or is it just me? Something in my head. Well, maybe I'm being extra gentle with it because it's new. <laughs> Could just be me. Okay. So there we have it. I'm just going to give this a quick dry. I'll take the excess off. You, but yeah, see, men, I am too. Sunday, oh, I know. Oh, you, Kirsty, you should have seen the mess I had Sunday afterward. Oh, my goodness. I'm just washing my brush, and that's all I'm doing. I don't even know if I want to use this brush. That's just it. <laughs> Put that to the side. Okay. Then the next thing that you want to do is here, I'm gonna use this is take your red clay. This is pretty much drying, not your red clay, your reddish brown. I'm still recovering from Sunday. That was like five hours, I think. You just want to come in and do some random areas there's no right or wrong um, in this part just do some random I'm just gonna look very weird I'll be honest with you when you're doing this but um, it will work out I promise that's it just some actually make this a little bit here a little bit darker my paints a little bit thick right now I don't know why Okay, so we've done the earth brown. Now we've done this color. And now we're gonna dry. Now the, the wax you can do as you want to, um, every layer. I do have another video on it, so if you want to watch it, you can. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm going to do it all in one go. Next color you want to take is your, and you can do this with any acrylic paints, creamy acrylics. It, I just happened to choose these colors because when I was thinking of what I want to do for her with the background, I just thought she worked really well with these colors. So, but you're more than welcome to use any, whoopsie daisy. Um, then take your red clay and again, just do some random parts. And it's gonna look, like I said, really weird, um, but don't let that fool you. It will work out, I promise. I think I promise. Gonna try and keep it more orangey. No, I'm not. I'll see. That's it. You don't need a lot. And dry that. Oh, that's okay, our angel. Family's important too. Family time is important. Just going to wash that same brush and dry it. I've aborted my new stamp <laughs> brush. <laughs> and now we're going to go with the okra. 
quite like this color and just do some areas with the okra don't be afraid um, sometimes it's nice to see what colors actually pop up underneath that's the beauty of this unless you're strategically doing this and not willy-nilly then you are going to end up with um, the same pieces pretty much Okay, so this is where now your finishing wax comes in. So you've seen me do lots lately with the brown wax. So this is a transparent wax. Let me pop this off. Let me sniff it first because it smells so nice. And, um, you know, you can do this one of two ways. It depends on how thin you want your lines now normally what i've done is i will and you can heat this up a little bit to make it go a little bit smoother you can do this one of two ways i might try something new today that i've not tried and then you can get it on your finger and then basically the premise behind this is you're going to be putting down the wax where you want to protect these colors so anywhere where you don't have wax will get colored with the next pink color. Okay, does that make sense? Wherever the wax is, that color will stay true. So I would definitely want my sides to remain brown. So I'm gonna put some um, down the sides here. And in fact, I want most of it on the outside to stay brown. So I'm just gonna definitely do a border other than this smelling really nice it's really easy to work with Oh, that's okay, Chris. How are you doing today? These are always available on our YouTube channel or you can play back in your Facebook. Now you can do some with your finger like this or you can take a skewer and make more thinner lines. It's a little bit more difficult, but it gives you like thinner lines come down it like this and then get rid of what's on your skewer. This way they become thinner and more random. But I did want to see if I could, although it might be hard to get out of my brush afterwards. I was thinking if I could brush it on, if that would work. So this does take time when you're doing it with the screw -er, screw skewer. I think it sounded like screw her. Oh damn. And again, it's all, I'm not really paying attention to where I'm putting this. All I know is I want that wooden effect. That's all I know. But I am going to try this with a brush because I just want to. I'm going to get a brush that is really <laughs> a brush that didn't get washed. And I'm going to try it with that. And we'll see what happens. Because isn't that this what it's all about? Just experimenting. So I'm going to put some on my brush. And then we'll see. Well, no, because I already have that other one, which is done. And we'll know how well this works or how different it is. Because everything up to this point, I've done pretty much identical. Okay, I don't want to, I think I've covered too much, to be honest. I think I got carried away, unfortunately. Oh, well. It happens okay so we're not gonna dry this we're gonna leave it as it is 
And now we're going to bring our um, country green. See how I'm taking the pop thing out of there? So bad. Country green's gorgeous. I just love it. So we're going to take our country green. And I think this brush is... I'll use this brush now. I'm going to back to my Penta, uh, new Stamperia brush. And I'm just going to gently, without trying to disrupt everything that's on there, I love the peeled paint look, so I like this technique. But to be honest with you, I did it before for the Facebook, and then I never did it again. So I'm just going very gently. I'm not using a heavy hand at all. And again, you can use any of the acrylic paints that you have in your stash. It's the wax that does the trick. You can't do it with the white or the brown wax because they're opaque. And this is transparent. So I'm going to give that a quick dry. I think I'll give it another layer just because I want to. I really love this country green. <laughs> you don't have to. It's got really good coverage. I think it's my brush that didn't allow me to have good coverage. I'm going to keep blaming the brush now. Yeah, if this doesn't work out, it's because I used a new brush. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to take off the access. Let's put that into some water, shall we? Let's put you to the side and let's dry that. You do want to make you do want to make sure that that's dry because um, you are going to be wiping this down. So there's two ways you can do this. There's, you can take a soft cloth. I do not have a soft cloth, but you can take a soft cloth. Let's just pretend this is a soft cloth, and then you can just start pulling back like this. Okay. Or you can take a baby wipe, make sure it's not too soapy and it's not too wet. We'll just give that a bit of a... And you can use the baby wipe. Takes off a lot more. Okay. Or you can take your skewer and really get into the little parts that you have on here like this. I like to use a skewer because I find I grab all the parts with the same kind of pressure. And it will only take it off where you put your wax down. So if you, it's not going to take it off. So here I can't get that piece off because there's no wax there. 
I just find with the skewer I can get every little nook and cranny. This gives a gorgeous peel the paint look effect. The thing is to just, um, I mean, I know, well, don't think too hard, um, but, and I know I just kind of willy nilly put mine down, but if you're going for a certain look or a certain color that you want to pop, then um, think about where you're putting your wax down. For instance, now I'm gonna put some more wax down. Okay. But this time, um, it's going to be the last time I'm going to put the wax down. Then I'm going to come in with the white. So I have to be a little bit careful to remember where I'm putting my wax down. So there won't be too much wax this time. Okay, so we're going to repeat the same process. You have a really nice peeled paint effect going on. Can you see that? Okay, let me just get rid of this little mess that I've made here. Actually, I'll just put it right here. Okay, so let's bring the wax again. Oh, thanks, Lynette. I like it. So I'm going to do my brush. Uh, and again, I want my corners. I'm going to try it with the brush um, rather than my fingers. See if it gives a more organic look. Probably not. So again, now remember, wherever you put the wax down is the color that's going to stay protected underneath. Okay. It's almost easy with my finger. I just like trying different things. You never know if what's going to work. But I always say what works for me doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. And what works for somebody doesn't always work for me. It's really about practice, practice, practice and doing what works for you. The products are there. How you use them. Of course, there's some rules to follow. You know, if you're using solvent based products, use a solvent based varnish. If you're using water-based products, use a water-based varnish. There are obviously some rules, you know, don't mix and match this. Um, but generally, how you use it, the tools that you use to use it is entirely up to you. And really, pra by practicing, like today, I've, like I said, I've never used a brush to do this. It's good because I'll get a feel for, one, what the effect is going to look like when it's done which I think will should be pretty similar. And the other thing is just see if it's easier. So now I have to think about this because I want certain areas to definitely show through. Now I'm gonna bring my skewer back because I do like that um, kind of thin look too. And then maybe I'll bring my brush into it. Now, I know I told you guys to think about it, but I'm not thinking about it. I'm just actually going to go for it and see if working organically <laughs> actually works in my favor. Don't want to cover up too much. I'm really loving these light areas. See, you can see I'm trying to keep these light areas because I'm really, really liking them. You can see where I did it with the skewer, you got the skinnier ones. And then where I did it, probably with the brush, I got those ones. So now I'm being a little bit more careful with the brush. And that's what I've learned today. With the brush, it's harder to gauge where it's all going. Now, if it stays too dark, I have I have a remedy. I will just do white splatters to brighten it up. <laughs> that's my that's my full black floor back plan today. I can't talk for some reason. OK, I don't want to overdo it again because last time I put too much on, remember. 
I've got splodges of it today. I don't know. So I think that's good. I think I'm happy with it. I've got a lot more on than I probably wanted to. Okay. So that's it. You're done with the wax for now. So you can put that away. Unless you want to leave it open because you want to continue sniffing it, which is really nice. Now what we're going to do is we are going to come over this with my brand new white. I think I've got this too splodgy. I'm going to say that right now. In my mind, it's too splodgy. Yeah, that's why I like uh, the steampunk elements too. The rust effect is my fave. Okay, now I've got to be careful because I don't want it where it's like all going to be white either. Now, see, now I'm. This is this is where I go into. Um, I'm second guessing myself. Oh well, let's just see what happens, shall we? I've got another brush out now. Deli, you gave me these brushes. See, this is all mangy and used, even though it's kind of hard. Yeah, I do have my go-to brushes for sure. With the white, we'll definitely do two layers. Oh my God, could you imagine if, um, I should say, oh my goodness, sorry. If this was all white now, because I didn't put down enough wax. So I'm going very softly, and that's why you're not getting like a super layer down. Although you can see it's still thicker than when I did the blue, because this brush is soaking it up, not so much because it's so used. Okay, let's give that a dry. over dry or get too closer because you'll just start melting your wax underneath so i'm just going to give it one more layer i can see see where it's melted it, it's coming off so trying to go in very very lightly had a phone call i had to turn that off Okay, this is good enough for me. I'm also leave this white out uh, in case I have to come and do the splatters. <laughs> I'm also leave my brush out in case I need to do the splatters. I mean, at the end of the day, the good news is you can always come back in and darken your work or lighten your work. I'm giving out my disclaimers right now. Okay, this looks kind of, it's still uh, a bit wet. Let's see. See, I tend to go for the skewer more to do this. It's a bit wet. Uh, my paint. I'm just going to dry my paint a bit more. Oh, don't watch if this makes you dizzy. I'm just trying to cool it down. Oh, 
Okay, I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not um, too worried about this. I think it turned out just a okay. The paint is still wet there. Well, what it could be is that the wax, it got too heated up underneath. Okay, I think I've got most of it off. Oops, it's going in there quite deep. Okay, let's have a look. It's still warm from me um, heating it up. I've got it all over me. I'm just going to come in and darken some of these areas where the wax have kind of melted onto it. Okay, I've got my dark edges back. You guys are like, get another baby wipe already, right? Feels a bit lumpy under there. I don't know if I've got wax under there. Nope, it just feels lumpy. No, oh, some wax right here. It's funny how you can tell uh, just by touching it sometimes. Okay, I will leave it at that. Let's move this out of the way, shall we? This mess I've created. Okay, so next step that you're going to do, this is kind of wet because I've got the... Um, <laughs> wet baby wipe on it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So next thing that you want to do is that you want to stamp on it. Oh, let me give you a close up. Sorry about that. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here. I get carried away. It looks brilliant. Thank you. So maybe less white, maybe less white. We'll see what the afterwards effect looks like. You can always come in and darken it. So what I want to do is I'm just going to place her here for a minute because I want to see. I'm going to use a Paris stamp because it's another travel stamp, if you will. And I just want to see where she where I should be kind of placing this. I kind of like it in her background, I like that postage mark there, too. Mm. I do like that postage mark at the top. Mm, that looks about right. I think that would work for me. Let me see. Um, probably shouldn't really use Versafine. I should probably use a...
permanent ink. I nearly forgot what I was going to say. What's wrong with me today? And the other thing is, I just want to make sure, do I want it here? Or do I want it here? See, it all sometimes comes down to how you want to do this. I think I'm going to do it the other way. This way. Okay. I hope my, my stamp pad is juicy. If not, well, then we're in trouble. Hmm. I think I said about here, right? Okay, let's give it a little bit more juice just in case. It's gone now. Hello, Janet. Hello, lovely. Haven't seen you for a while. I'm watching your post, though. I don't know if you guys know, my hand is still hurting. It's so weird. It's been like three weeks, four weeks now. If your thing is too wet, your paint, your stamp's not going to really take. Um, this is what it looks like now. Okay, and then I'm just going to come in and I just want to, I could have actually probably not done all of it, but too late now is done. So <laughs> I'll make myself laugh. And this one I'm going to do to the side because I want to get that postage stamp in again. Yeah, I probably would do it more randomly, I think. So this is what it looks like now. Isn't that just so neat? Thanks, Chris. Oh, lots of family things going on, I know, hey? She actually looks really nice in the black here. Okay, now, what I might do... What I might do, this stamp is kind of wet now. Um, I might, I might, I might. Oh my goodness, I have so many of the stamps. So of course I'm gonna go for my crackle stamp, aren't I? Let me actually give that a bit of a dry. just love this technique see what happens is the, if there's any wax on there I don't think there is so I'm just going to introduce a little bit it doesn't matter what color I don't know why I'm going for this color it just was one I took out and what I'm going to do is just introduce a few different colors in the background can you see it right there you can use any color this just adds to your piece Oh, thanks, Chris. So I'm just kind of, there's no rhyme or reason where I'm placing these. I just love the crackle stamp, what can I say? <laughs> it has been our most popular stamp, that's for sure. See, now I just want to keep playing with it, but to be honest with you, there's not, I mean, I shouldn't really be putting it all over the place like that. Well, there's no right and wrong, right? So let's put that away, shall we? I hope this is all making sense as usual because I'm rambling to myself. I think I'm nervous about my COVID shot. I think that's what the issue is. Okay, let's have a look at that close up now. Look at how beautiful that is. I just want to leave it like this. Yeah, mine too, Gloria. I see you can see the blue popping in there. So maybe not too much white, actually. Worked out really good, <laughs> as I say to myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Laurie. Happy birthday, Laurie. Happy birthday, happy birthday. I know I was a day late. I know I was a day late. 
I quite like the her in black on it too. But okay, let's colour her in. I'm just gonna go grab I'm gonna actually let's just see. Oh, she works really nice on it too. I'm just gonna go see what are the I'm just gonna go grab my waxes. I have my I have my um, gold wax and brass wax over here. I took these out because these were the brasses, the wax paste that I used. But I'm looking at my wax paste. Not this blue. Where's my turquoise blue? My turquoise blue. No, this blue. Oh, I'm wondering if I should. Shall I use a turquoise blue? Decisions, decisions. There's magenta too. Maybe we should just go wild. We've got magenta. Oh no, does it? Oh, we got a. This blue is really nice too. Yes, too. We got turtle. Oh my goodness. Okay, let let me. Okay, let me pull these. <laughs> <laughs> like a can a kid in a candy store. Uh the other colour, look at this purple, purple, purple. And of course, green. So look, I don't know. See, this is now having said that, honey gold goes really well with that yellow in the back. How can you choose? I can't. That's why I'm asking you guys. So we definitely have a turquoise in there, so we'll pull that out. But I'm telling you, there's no colour that they don't have that doesn't match. So we have this beautiful yellow, beautiful, beautiful yellow. Green. Okay. Um, this might be interesting. Maybe I'll stay away from the purples and the magentas. Maybe I'll pull this. See, this is process of elimination now. So somebody better not say purple and magenta. Oh no, purple and magenta, Chris. Okay, let's bring those back out. I'm going to be here all day if I don't get this sorted. I just have a regular old brush. Okay, let's bring her back and let's have a look. What can we do? Let's put that brush in there. This brush has wax on it now. Um, oh my God, decisions, decisions. Look, the good news is whatever we go over this with, um we can change it it really doesn't matter because you can come over with it with the wax but i definitely think we can do the turquoise mm, i do like myself a bit of gold but then there's brass copper let's stay away from oh no copper goes with that color there okay Green, I don't know how, where or how I'm going to incorporate the green in this, but we'll put it aside. I think the purple and magenta. Okay, I'm going to leave that out for now. And then I haven't decided between the yellow and the uh, honey gold. But we better start something, right? So, isn't that Michael Jackson's song? You better be starting something. I have to say it very sing very uh, low voice because I can't sing. Okay, Chicky, let's get you done. Let's see which colors are going to be standing out the most. Mm. See, see all of you that say that I make it look easy. See, this is not easy. Okay, so we have to decide. Mm. Now I'm deciding what colours to do her. Well, let's start off with her stocking, shall we? Shall we do her stocking first? Mm. Okay, can we make her boots gold? Maybe. See, look what you guys have done now. Okay, that's it. I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to use my brush. Are you guys laughing at me because this is uh, green, yellows and golds? Oh, the blue got picked, Lynette. So all you're going to do, 
is you're just gonna come in and do her now don't worry if you cover her up too much with um, the blue color or any color that you're using because you can come right back in and you can um, you can even come back in with the um, black primer or you can even come back in um, with a different color paste because we do need to shadow her she's got blue arms now okay so we're going to keep going around her jacket here have to make sure it's her jacket and not her boobs a thinner brush would work too because mine's quite thick i should probably just get a really thinner brush i'm just going to use my fingers here I want that to be a lot deeper and really embedded in there. Can you guys see what I'm doing? And then with this area, I won't go in with the brush. Okay. Need a baby wipe, that's what I need for my fingers. It's kind of hard to see her on that white, isn't it? Does that help? Does that really make her pop more? I think so. <laughs> I don't know, that's the problem, Chris. I don't know what will look beautiful. That's the problem, that's the issue, the dilemma I'm in. Okay. Let's do I don't know what to do. Let's give her hat a little bit of blue. We're gonna make most of her hat blue and then we're gonna highlight it. Make sure you're getting all those little nooks and crannies. She's got a blue hat now. Don't know if I like the blue hat. Okay, now just because everybody likes the green, I'm gonna do a little bit of green on her stocking. Let's make her stocking green, shall we? I love working with the waxes. And maybe we could, if we're keeping her kind of green and blue. See, I'm trying to appease the crowd here. Let's do her bodice in this green too. I'm going very gently here because I don't want to get too much into the nooks and crannies here because um, I want to keep some of that black shadow behind her. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera there. Okay, so she's got a green stocking, she's got a green bodice, let's bring a little bit of that green into her hat. And then these areas I'm going to make green. She got like these badass shoulder pads going on and cuffs. So can you see what she's looking like right now? 
I could probably go in darker in areas. Now, what colour skirt do I want to give her? Should we be should we be really silly and give her a purple skirt or something or magenta skirt? You guys are like, oh no, here she goes again. She can't decide. Let's have a look. Now, maybe we better just stick to what we're doing. Yes, with the waxes, you can overlap as many times as you want. She She's kind of, she's there, but she's very mellowed into the back. So maybe I'm going to come in with a little bit of copper because she's just a little bit too mellow for me. Okay, that's better. Let's give her copper hair. I need her to stand out. Now her hair I'm going to do very, very dark with the wax. And then as I come round to her face, I'm just going to gently do it because I need her features to stay out so that you can see them. Okay. I'm also going to come in and highlight some of this green because it's just not sharp enough for me. And it could be because I'm not going hard enough because uh, my brush is too big. I should really have a smaller brush. Okay, I'm liking her now. See, she's getting built up. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Okay. Now, what is it? Now, maybe I will do her booties in this color. Her booty? Her, not her booty, but her booties. Looking pretty cool. Look at her. Just she's just styling and profiling. Often imitated but never duplicated. Who used to sing that song? Often imitated, never duplicated. It was a run MDC. I can't remember. Oh, I love this copper colour. I really do. Not like copper. Isn't that just like fantastic? See here I'm going a lot harder because I can. Um, it's all one area. Let's darken her hair too because I just love this copper colour. Let's see, where else can I do? A little bit darker. Okay, let's see, what other colours can we use? I'm just thinking about her skirt. I'm thinking... I'm just going to check out that... Oh my goodness, where is it? I'm just going to check out this blue. I just want to see what it looks like. It's kind of got mixed in with the... This is not what it looks like. <laughs> it's mixed in with the... Um... I've mixed it in accidentally with the copper. But I just want to see what that looks like. It's kind of nice. I don't know. We're going to go for it now. I'm just trading between my fingers and my brush
Don't forget all your little nooks and crannies. And that piece is really in there, so I'm going to really get in there. Okay. She's looking pretty mighty fine, I think. Okay, so... Let's now colour her belt. And you know what? I might do a little bit of gold highlighting. Just a little bit. Just on certain areas, not everywhere. I don't know if you can see the two different tones in her purse. Mighty fine she is. Thank you, Charlie. She is mighty fine. Uh, oopsie daisy. Sorry, Chris, I can't check your messages. <laughs> I keep seeing them. I saw them pop up and I'm like, uh-oh. I can see them pop up, but I can't get to them. Yeah, that blue is nice. So now I'm just going to come in with a little bit of that copper and just go over these little bits that are super um, imposed on here. See, I know I asked you guys for suggestions, but then I kind of went for my own blue, didn't I? That's so rude. But anyway, you can continue to um, do stuff and play with her um, as much as you want. I'm just highlighting her. Can you see the two-tone in her dress now? I'm just taking a bit of that um, um, copper and I'm just highlighting wherever the high areas are because I really like that that two-tone look on her. Can you guys see that? It's like a two-tone look. So I'm just gently, just on my finger, just like this, just picking up where the areas are raised. You don't have to do this. You can use a different color. It gives her more of a, a metallic look. Might actually bring this blue into her hat from her skirt just a little bit to tie it in there's really no right or wrong way okay i'm gonna see if i can't darken her um cut my hands I'm going to use my little pinky finger. We In Punjabi, we call it a chichi. I'm going to use my chichi and just brighten this up a little bit. It's easier to go harder with my finger than it is with my brush. Maybe a little bit there. Just can't help myself. You can play with the waxes all day long, to be honest. Okay, so now that I've got her where I want her to be, Obviously, I'm going fast because, oh, look, I didn't even bring in my yellow, did I? That's okay. Uh, but I really like that okra color. Okay, I'm just going to see what it looks like. Look at this yumminess. Oh, no, I'm kind of scared. No, it's kind of okay. I just love just the, how you can just come in and highlight and you can just totally change things. So basically, I've gotten rid of the green. No, well, not really, not all of it. Um, but I'm building up layers. This is so um, relaxing to do. Okay, I better stop because you guys will be here forever otherwise.
I'm telling you that you need every single wax color. It, it's as simple as that. There's no two ways about it. So I use the honey gold. I forgot to use the yellow. Okay, so the next step that you want to do, I'll see if you can see her now in all her glory. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. We are going to come in now. We're going to go back to the earth brown that we used on the back of our tag. And we are going to come in and give her some highlights. And I need a little Barbie, Barbie brush, but there's a Barbie brush. I need a baby brush, but I don't know what like my baby brush. Well, now that I can't find my baby brush, I'm just going to have to suffice with something else. This is my, I use a pen holder as my paintbrush carousel and I can't find a paintbrush in here. I obviously, um, I'm being a bad child. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do basically is we are just going to come in and highlight some dark areas. So pick up some brown on your brush. Tap off the excess. Let it work itself up the brush. Okay. Thanks, Lynette. This is perfect. Leave it alone. You'll love it when I once I do the highlights on it. So what you're going to do is that you're just going to come in and give her some shadowing. So can you see the shadow? It's hard to see, I guess, the shadowing. But all you're doing is you're just shadowing her um, up. Just where the creases of her gown is or her dress or whatever you want to call it. And this just gives it that extra, extra 3D effect. Now you can also use your black primer to do this. But you see now it's kind of got a shadow in there. I know it's hard to see. So I'm just going to continue shadowing her here. I promise not to keep you much longer. And this just really accentuates the the piece even more. Now, if you put down too much brown, don't worry. Because you can just come back in with your wax paste. So this you want to take your time with to grab all the shadows. You see she's more shadowed in here now. So take your time. Now that wouldn't have a shadow on it because that's in the light, but oh well. But there is a big difference when you do your shadowing. Everything comes more alive. But I could spend um, quite a considerable amount of time doing my shadowing, but I won't obviously um, spend that time too much because you guys need to obviously get on with your day but you get the idea of how you want to see now that that's shadowed it looks more 3d yeah big difference when you start the shadowing and you just keep working at it and again if you put too much on or too little then you're just going to come in with your wax paste and if you want to do this with um a little bit of black primer you can also do that you're just basically shadowing 
to give her more of a 3D effect. But like I said, I won't continue with the too much shadowing because you guys need to get going. I'm concentrating so much I'm forgetting to breathe some I have actually sometimes have to put a note up on my um computer on my laptop that says breathe because I honestly think I forget to I know it's not possible that I forget to but I feel like I forget to okay I'm gonna stop here because honestly um there's quite a bit of shadowing that I want to give her and this would take um, quite a while. But I think you guys get the idea. You just want to shadow her wherever those shadows are going to be. And continue with that. I am going to, just because I want to use the yellow, I don't know what's wrong with me. I am going to bring a little bit into her hat to brighten it up there i feel better now i just so badly wanted to use that um i've gotten some gold there um but i'm gonna take that off the shadowing is like i said it's one of those things that takes time but I think you guys get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I think you guys get the idea. I think, I hope you guys get the idea. Okay, so here she is. Let me show it to you. hope you guys I see all the shadowing that I've started or even on the briefcase you can see now the shadows on it um, all these little details are important and again they take about five minutes to make so I like her standalone um, she's kind of veered off the colors of my pad here but you know that's really easy because I can just bring in these colors from elsewhere but there she is I hope you like her she's in Paris today She's in Paris, and before she was in India, the Taj Mahal. So you've got kind of like a monochrome one, and then we took some different colors to her. Um, you could flip them over. I mean, they kind of work either way. I'm just playing with you guys now. But there you have it, I hope. So this is just using the brass, gold, and copper. And uh, that one was using uh, colors of your choice, which I then made my choice and don't change them. And the rustic Paris stamp. And of course, don't forget the t whole technique we did with this. This was just a blank piece of wood that we started with. And look at this great background that we created. So again, work with your shadows to make them nice and her dark where you can see, you know, around everything up her leg and stuff like that. So I hope you really enjoyed it. Actually, this reminds me of very much the colors in the pad now that I come to think of it. Um, but there you go. I hope you enjoyed the Facebook Live. I hope it was helpful. Um, so Laurie, happy birthday. I know I'm late. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying happy birthday to you. So Laurie. Yes, you can, um, on this one, you can, let me just see. Uh, I'm just trying to see what the waxes are. Uh, 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 Dali, what are the waxes? Are they water-based? Can waxes be water-based? I don't know. But either glossy varnish and solvent-based or matte varnish and solvent-based. And I'm sure you could probably use the other varnish too on the waxes because uh, they're not got a solvent in them. So yeah, any kind of glossy or matte varnish will do. But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching me. I hope I didn't take... Um, 
Yeah, so if you were to, once you've got her down, um, if you were to shadow around her on this side, because this is where her shadow would be, then for sure you would get a much, much better uh, final product. Oh, you're welcome, Kirsty. Uh, thank you. You were too, Chris. Okay, <laughs> that's good. It's good to know. So two techniques for today. Um, whether I'll use these backgrounds, I don't know. But um, that was just kind of a bonus because I knew just painting her um, would have been a quicker one. But there you go. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, let me know. You're welcome, Janet. You're welcome, Dali. Uh, Dali, I'm going to give you a quick call. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. You're very welcome. Alrighty, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me. Bye, Min. Bye, Janet. Bye, everybody that's here. Thanks, Lynette. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Bye, everyone.